the main reason why you want to transplant things in the fall is because it's cool and the plants don't have to struggle uh, while they set their roots in the ground. When you are transplanting some uh, something in the middle of the summer, uh, the plant have to struggle a lot because they are facing the heat and uh, dryness and all that stuff, humidity. So there's a lot that is a lot of stress that is on the plant and also insects as well, insect pressure. Um, while in the fall and in the spring, the plants have a lot less pressure from the weather and from the insects. Hello everyone, if you are new here, my name is Chantelle and if you have been thinking about transplanting your shrubs and perennials or trees, now is the best time to do it. Fall is the best time to do it, I should say. We are in mid-September right now and I have a some like a something between a shrub and a tree it's a it's a shrub or a small tree you can consider it in those categories i planted it in a location thinking it's it's going to stay small but then i did some research on it and i was looking around in our area at that same plant planted in different locations and it looks like it's going to grow a lot more than i want it to grow so i need to get it out of there uh, let me take you over there and show you what that shrub is and uh, where we are going to be transplanting it to. Right behind me, it's a little berry, you probably can't see it, is a type of weeping cedar. I forgot the name. Hopefully as we are digging it up, we will be able to figure out what the name is because I may still have the tag on the plant. So around the plant also I have some perennials that I need to be divided anyway so if I end up digging some of them up that's totally fine I'll just take them and plant them in another place I have a an idea of where to plant them here so I have the uh, oak leaf hydrangea over here this is gonna grow like probably like 15 feet tall or 20 feet tall something like that and the cedar over here the reason why I planted it is because we have a post over here that has electricity in it and I wanted to hide it. I did not want to look at it because it kind of stands out and it's ugly and I wanted something permanent in there uh, that's evergreen that's going to hide it in the winter as well as in the summer. Uh, but this type of cedar turns out grows to like five to even, uh, the tag says it grows to five feet tall but uh, the uh, from what I'm seeing uh, as I drive around the area over here and I see the same plant planted in this little in this area that we live in I see that it grows a lot bigger than that it's going to grow probably uh, as tall as the deck is or even taller and I don't want that now you can prune this tree because it's a weeping uh, shrub or tree so it's easy to uh, shape it you can give it a haircut every season but I don't want to plant this in here because there's also septic that's going to that area over there and it's connected I think on this side of the house so I'm a little nervous about having this over here what I'm thinking of doing is digging it up and planting instead a boxwood now I don't have a boxwood here with me but uh, maybe this season maybe next season I'll get a boxwood and plant it in here so I'm gonna go grab my tools and dig this up and then I'll show you where we are going to be planting it. You know what? Let's go first to the place where I want to plant it and see if the location is clear. If not, I'll have to clear it up and then plant. <laughs> so I might have uh, gotten myself in a little bit of trouble over here, but I'm determined I'm going to do it. So let's go ahead. So here we are. We're at the location. This is the place where I planted the hedge and uh, we had the hurricane pass by yesterday. It didn't do any damage except really blow all the cardboard that I have lying around to smother the weeds. Uh, and I need to be putting some mulch on all this cardboard. So I have to actually get this chore done this fall before the snow comes. And usually I leave this to the end of the fall when I'm not able to do anything else. But anyways, so I don't know what you guys can see and what you can't because the lighting here is a little bit difficult because of the shade and all that. So we have the trees over here. I was thinking it would be nice to have the golden cedar that I have uh, and in contrast with the cedar over here. So here's what I'm thinking. I want to plant over here a snowball viburnum 
tree uh, in this location right here. So right behind where these trees are that are going to be taken down, this one is already cut, but I, we just have to cut it down to the base and that one has to be cut down also. These trees just seed themselves everywhere over here. So probably right around there, I'm going to be planting a snowball viburnum or over here somewhere basically. So I'm thinking the cedar that I have is probably going to go where all the shrubbery is. So where you see, here, let's walk over there. So either here or I could also just plant it right over here, right in front of all the shrubbery. I could do that. I actually forgot to show you the cedar. So let's walk over there and show you the cedar, dig it up, bring it over here and then figure out where to plant it. Then I'll have a better idea because right now it's hard to imagine how it's going to look like before I put it in there because I need to see the foliage with the rest of the area over there and I need to kind of imagine how big it's going to grow. That pile over there behind me is from all the stuff I cut over here on this side so airplane <laughs> so I'm actually going to take that pile slowly so loud all of a sudden I'm going to take this pile uh, slowly over time and put it over my compost pile and I just layer do like lasagna layers so I would take the wood uh, from this pile and then put weeds over it so that would be, the wood would be the carbon and the weeds would be the nitrogen. And I also put some kitchen scraps in there and it makes the pile break down a lot faster. And also uh, it just uh, makes really good compost that way. So let's uh, go ahead and show you the cedar because I totally forgot to actually show you the cedar. So I'm gonna turn around over here. And I need to also clean up all the stuff that, all the grass that I sprayed because what happened is we had tons of rain so lots of grass and weed grew everywhere and I sprayed it but I didn't have the chance to clean it up so I gotta do that as well so if you see the grass and the mess around me that's why so here it is and it's not growing as fast as it should because of all the smothering that's happening over here. So once I put it on its own, this is going to take off and grow as big as it should. And I think I'm not going to be pruning it because I do like its natural shape. When I've seen it pruned, I really don't like how it looks like. But when this thing is uh, left to do its natural thing, it looks actually very beautiful. So let's go ahead and dig it up. wasn't a lot of roots. I thought it was going to be a lot harder to dig it up and it is uh, and I don't see the tag. So I'll look it up online and see if I can find the name. And there are lots of mosquitoes around it. Man. Um, and I'll flash the name for you guys on the screen over here. Uh, this way if you like it you could get it for yourself. <laughs> Especially now when things are on sale. Evergreens though I noticed that they don't put them on sale as much as they do for like the shrubs and the deciduous shrubs and perennials. Yes sweetie. So um, I have my little one. She decided to join me and she has chocolate on her face so that's evidence that she had sweets. Did you have sweets? Yes. <laughs> Alright so let's go ahead and put that over there see where we can plant it. I may come back over here and dig some of the perennials that are in this bed to divide them and put them in 
the front flower bed. Another reason why I am transplanting this from that area is because if you notice, I have a lot of yellow in that flower bed and I felt like I need to incorporate something that has dark green foliage instead of yellows because I have yellows and blues but nothing with super dark green foliage with exception to the honeysuckle in the back and that's going to be going either this year or next year because I have other plans for that area and the honeysuckle is just a little bit too invasive so let's see where we can put this yeah I was thinking, what if I put it at the end over there? This way we have the green, the dark green over here, contrasted with this yellow. And this is going to grow smaller than this tree over here. They won't, they probably won't touch each other, but I just need something to like, to stand it up. I think that would be better maybe and then the viburnum I could push it over a little bit this way so it'd be away from there I don't even know if I can get a snowball vi viburnum where I am that can survive our zone uh, but I do plan on planting a viburnum in here whether a snowball or another viburnum tree not shrub I think I'm gonna plant it over there. That's gonna be really difficult though because I have a lot of roots, so I may need the, the pickaxe. So when I look at it from here, I think it's going to look nice. Just, we have to take all these, that, that tree out over there and the tree next to it and the ones in the back. And what's in front of the cedar, I don't know if you guys can see, I can't see on the camera. Uh, here, I'll get a little closer. So what's in front of the cedar are some flocks that I planted over here, uh, probably in the summer and they, are not doing great because one they weren't in a good location in the first place I just dug them up because I was trying to save them and I put them in some pots uh, because I was digging them up from over here and I kind of put a whole bunch of them in the same uh, in two pots so uh, they stayed in there for a while and then I planted them here in the middle of the summer and extreme heat didn't give them much water 
so they're not doing that great next season they should be doing better I also planted some of that uh, vinca that's I think that's vinca is it I forgot its name <laughs> it does this beautiful blue uh, flower in the spring and actually that came from our neighbor's yard over there they have a whole lot of it and it was creeping to our property so I just took whatever was creeping there and I planted it in there I thought it would kind of create a cohesive look and uh, I think the yellow of that cedar with the dark green of these trees is gonna look beautiful and um, hopefully next season I'll be able to clear this up and um, maybe the next season or the season after I'll be able to plant a viburnum in here as long as I can find a viburnum that I like because I'm very particular about what I want in here I want something with big white blooms I think it will look very beautiful with a dark green of the evergreens in here and uh, I have other plans for this area in here but for now I'm just leaving it kind of natural and I do have to again put the mulch in here to suppress the weeds and I use the cardboard and mulch but uh, unfortunately the wind blew my cardboard out of here and it's been <laughs> blown for a while I just put it back um, in there eventually I'll have to by the end of the season put the mulch in here and kind of tidy it up because it's hideous right now and hopefully clean this area over here so now I'm going back to that bed and I want to take some of the iris not the bearded iris but the Siberian iris and I want to plant some of it in the front flower bed when I was digging trying to dig up some of it it was super hard at seemed that there is some really tough root in there I'm gonna try again if I can't I'll give up to uh, today not forever but today so I'm going to dig up this section of the clump right here so that if I plant a boxwood right over here then it will have the space to grow I'll also have to dig up some plants over here I have some bearded iris and also some chives that I have to dig up out of here the bearded iris I'll transplant that Next season, I don't want to do it this season unless, unless I get a boxwood. If I get a boxwood, then I'll just transplant these bearded irises somewhere else. I'll probably plant them in the same bed. I'm going to be planting these uh, Siberian irises. In. And also, if you notice, I have a lot of grassy texture in here. So I kind of want to minimize that a little bit in here. And this is why, another reason why I took the weeping cedar or spruce I can't tell I don't know <laughs> well, again I'll have to look that up because of all this grassy texture that I have in here now there is this uh, euonymus in here that's absolutely gorgeous I'm gonna be taking some cuttings out of it I like to keep it a little bit low so that we can still see in the f to the front of the bed but even if it's uh, the even if it's high like this you can still see through it so this is really cool I actually like this but I do like it to be a little bit shorter than this I also noticed a hydrangea bloom on some of the new growth right here and hopefully that will be um, getting bigger and blooming this fall I that's exciting I did not expect that because this hydrangea put on tons of growth this a year because a lot of the growth that I had from last year died back because of the cold winter that we got this past year or this year uh, we got minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit and that killed a lot of the hydrangea um, big part of it I should have covered it I knew I should have when we were expecting the frost but I just wasn't able to it's all right it's back again and it's gonna be blooming hopefully next season um, Lord willing, if the deer don't come and eat it, I do need to spray all my plants again with a deer repellent. So let's go ahead and dig this plant up.
okay that's a giant division look at the hole it left over here I mean yes the cedar was in here but also all this was this Siberian iris I did not expect it to grow this much I oh I planted it in here two years ago maybe maximum three years ago I think it was like two years ago and look how much there's still left I could divide this probably like four more times I'm going to be dividing that a lot because I don't want to plant it like that in one clump and then this way I could just spread it around the bed and create a, a big clump of them and to provide us with some beautiful purple color in the spring so I forgot to mention one of the important things very important <laughs> issue here the main reason why you want to transplant things in the fall why it's the best time really to, to transplant in the fall is because it's cool and the plants don't have to struggle uh, while they set their roots in the ground when you are transplanting some uh, something in the middle of the summer uh, the plant have to struggle a lot because they are facing the heat and uh, dryness and all that stuff humidity so there's a lot that is a lot of stress that is on the plant and also insects as well insect pressure um, while in the fall and in the spring the plants have a lot less pressure from the weather and from the insects during that time they can put all their energy into producing the roots instead of worrying about all the different elements that they have to uh, face in order to stay alive and also during the cool season the ground stays moist uh, for a lot longer it stays cooler so the plant really doesn't suffer as much you don't see as much wilt as you would if you were to transplant something in the summer so the best time again is fall and spring and this is why I'm doing this right now look at this at last rose it is at last <laughs> blooming and putting on some growth and I love love the color this is kind of like a peachy color I do I don't like orange but I love the peachy color it's kind of a mix between orange and pink and I think it plays really well with purples and pinks and whites and all those colors and I love how it looks like up against the sweet potato vines now it is a little smothered by the sweet potato vines so that's okay and you can see over here the gumfrina are putting on some growth I do need to mow the lawn but our lawnmower is again broken <laughs> so so it's not super broken the battery needs to be charged and I keep forgetting how to do it so I need my husband's help again and I'm not gonna mow the lawn today because it's getting late and I do have to do these chores and maybe during the week I'll mow the lawn if the weather is good we'll see <laughs> so we are at the front flower bed and I want to plant these Siberian irises in this area. I'm not sure exactly where. This is going to be difficult because this bed is going to be changing. Because I do want to be planting roses, but the roses are going to be going a little bit behind the flocks. So between each of the flocks, I'm going to be planting a rose. It's going to push a little bit back further behind the flocks, creating sort of a triangle, semi-triangle. So maybe I can put the Siberian iris in the front a little and just kind of create repetition with the Siberian iris. I could do that. So I have to pull out all this chamomile. I harvested so much chamomile off of them. I was actually able to harvest three quart jars and one pint jar off of these chamomile plants. I could still harvest off of them if I want to, but I think it's just time to get them out of here. Uh, we'll probably going to be getting a frost pretty soon, and even if not, I harvested enough chamomile, I don't need any more, and they look messy in here. So it's time to kind of start revamping this bed and getting it ready for next season. The rest of the annuals I'm going to leave here until the frost takes them, like the basil and the calendula because they still look pretty.
really hard to divide. The roofs are so tough. I put them over here. This one, I'm gonna push it a little bit in. I There's a Veronica right in behind it and that's shorter than the than anything I'm gonna be planting in front of it. So I need to actually push it back to the front, uh, probably right in front of where that iris is. And then I can push the iris a little bit back. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that one over there. I think I will, mm, we'll see. Uh, I was thinking maybe I could put it over there, but then that's just gonna block that rose and that rose has been struggling so much for so many years. This is what it looks like right now. I, It's not gonna look the way how I want it until next season. I feel like I might need to move this a little bit, but the thing is, the crown of the plant is over here and it's kind of tilting over right now because of the way how the plant was growing. Is it weird that I do love the dead bloom stalks of the Siberian irises? I like to leave them. They probably are stealing energy from the plants when they when I just leave them to produce the seeds. Uh, but also, this is another way for to allow them to spread themselves, uh, so they could just seed themselves, and I could dig up the seedlings and transplant them wherever I want. I think it will look good. I feel like the bed looks a little bit better than what it did before with the chamomile. You might agree, you might disagree. I don't know. <laughs> Right now, again, they're not gonna look as I want them to look. So um, we'll give them another season. And if I don't like their place, their placement next season, then I can always transplant them. But I think they will provide some beautiful spring color, late spring color in here. I have some tulip bulbs. I accidentally dug up some of them. So I transplanted them in some other places and we'll see if they will come back. I accidentally sliced one of them. So hopefully that one is still okay. We'll see. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be leaving a link for another video for you to watch right here. And if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye. So I went ahead and I moved it a few inches. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can. I think it looks better now.